morning. We have a lot to do today on the homestead. We're going to rake up fall leaves and make a leaf mold pile to sit all winter. We're going to cover all the beds with low tunnels and row covers uh, to protect them from frost, to keep out critters, to increase warmth and moisture. And I'm cooking a carnitas today too. So we have a lot to do today. Let's get started. Well, here's how we know it's fall. Our oak leaves have dumped. So it's time to rake them up and make a leaf mold pile for the winter. I've already done several rakings and piled them into these beds here. They'll be, all the plants here are well established, so they're fine with a layer of mold. I don't know about where you live, but where I live in Northern California, we have these three different bins that we use for garbage. One is for trash landfill, one is for recycle, and one is for organics. <clears throat> this is basically for people who don't have compost piles. Of course, we have three compost piles, so our food scraps go into compost piles, but if you didn't, you could use, a, use this bin for it. But what we do for this bin is that we put whatever leaves we're not going to use as mulch or whatever clippings, all that goes in here. So let's rake up some leaves. Okay, so these leaves we placed under our peach tree, not right around the trunk. You don't want a volcano effect around your the trunks of your trees, especially your producing trees, but a nice big pile here that will break down over the winter and become leaf mold. You know, whole leaves in compost are not good because they, um, sh they shed water, they don't absorb water, and then they become like this flat, messy, slimy mess. And what you want is this light, fluffy leaf mold that breaks down over time. So if you shred your leaves, you can put them in the compost, but we don't have a shredder. So we're just going to make a pile of leaf mold. This will take about a year or two to mature, and then we'll use it as mold. <music> carrots now. What's that definition about insanity? Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So we've got to do something different this time. And I'll show you what we're going to do. This is what's happening. Somebody's eating the tops. Can you see? The tops of my carrots along with the tops of my kale and the tops of my peas. Arg. So we're going to do something different this time. See, these are the tops of my kale. Look at that, nibbled right off. So in the spring, we add a layer of compost to each one of the beds, but in the fall, we don't do that. And so I didn't get any manure this year and I'm feeling like the beds need a little extra something. So I'm gonna give them a little fertilizer, which I don't normally do. This is a plant-based, um, seaweed-based plant food. This is by a local company and I read all about it. It's organic. Um, and it's it's seaweed and it's in a water-soluble form it has a pretty high nutrient content so I'm not going to use a whole lot of it uh, and I, but I want to put it everywhere I want to put it in the fruit trees and I want to put it in the flower beds so I'm just gonna make a little oh dear I need the funnel I'm just gonna make put a little bit in here to two liters of water and then fill it up and fertilize the beds. Okay, 
So next what we're going to do is we're going to cover all of the beds with low tunnels and row cover. And this does a lot of different things. <clears throat> it protects everything from frost. Our first average frost date is de December 15th. So our first frost could come as soon as two weeks from now. I don't think it's gonna, you know, we had something called an El Nino this um, past winter, which means we'll have the opposite this winter, which is La Nina. It's all very confusing, but what it means is that I think it's not gonna be as cold. It's probably gonna be quite a bit warmer and probably less rain, which is really, really bad. So anyway, we may not have to worry about frost, but this way it's done. So we're going to cover the beds for frost. That also, every time you put a cover over a bed, it takes it about 500 miles south. So 500 miles south of here is the border of, of California and Mexico. So that makes things really warm under there. One thing you need to be very careful of is you need to have good ventilation, uh, plenty of oxygen, and you need to, it does, the, these row covers are permeable for rain, but you do need to make sure you have a drip system or a watering system in place so that things stay moist. Um, but they do stay moist longer because they're covered, less evaporation. And I'm really hoping it's gonna keep the opossum or whatever is eating all of our stuff out of these beds. So we're gonna take care of that. Let's get started, it's a big project. When we built these raised beds, we put in all of these row cover, low tunnel, rebars all the way around the edges of the bed so that we could do this every winter and then my dad was concerned about these sticking up and maybe somebody falling and hurting themselves so he made these great blocks to put on each one so the first thing I'm going to do is go around and take off all the blocks and there's a lot of them so that's what I'm going to do first <laughs> Elizabeth Farley mentioned that we this uses rebar and PVC pipe uh, for our row cover frame, frames here. Um, I bought 3 8 inch rebar uh, and about it comes in from Home Depot at about 10 foot lengths and I cut it about I think 16 inches so that I could get 8 inches down and 8 inches above. Uh, and then this is just regular old half inch uh, PVC, you know, two bucks, a, two bucks a length, 10 foot lengths, um, gets you about gets you a, a height of about four feet at the top here. This side's done. You can see that we've got the broccoli bed here, and we've got a bed of, bed of greens, and we've got a bed of spinach, and then the tomatoes are still up, and the mildewy watermelon is, uh, pumpkin is still up, and then that's the carrot bed. Now for the other side. Well, Tom got a bee sting today, and I don't know what I did, but that's the way it goes. Okay, here's the south garden done. So the things on trellises are difficult to tent, so we don't usually do it. The peas seem to manage okay. Um, although something's eating the peas as well. You can see the tops are eaten off, so I may reconsider that. But anyway, this is done now. So I want to show you that um, this is called Agrabon. Agrabon 19 is the kind. You can get different thicknesses. So I want to show you that the sides are fairly open and vented, so there's plenty of air going through. And then we use binder clips. There are fancy clips you can buy, but we just got binder clips from the office supply store. And so many times during the day I'll come out and just open these up, or the wind will open them naturally, and then and then they get plenty of air and they get plenty of light. Light does penetrate through these. Let's see, I think that's all I wanted to tell you about with those. So it's winter again. That's what this means to me, it's winter. We're almost winter. This week. Next week, next Saturday, is Adam's birthday. He's turning 15. So I don't know if we'll get a chance to do a video, maybe sometime over the Thanksgiving break. So I hope you're all well. I hope you're encouraged by being able to control what's around you, not worrying so much about what's happening in the world, although that's important too. But right now I'm finding comfort in just paying attention to my little sphere. 
and I hope you have a great week. See you next week. Bye.